probably the only place where you don't need to be someone else. You don't need to put on a mask, you don't need to be pretend. You know why? Because God knows everything about us. I know what it is like, you know, the moment we walk, walk to the church, we must put on the holy face, you know. And, but God knows and He sees through us. Amen? And so we can just be like us. Well, that does not mean that we don't change. We are always changing, you know. Some people say, I'm not like Jesus. The same yesterday, today, and forever. <laughs> but Jesus is perfect, you know. He doesn't need to change. But we, we need to keep changing to be more like Him. Amen? And be more and more like Jesus. Because we are not perfect, right? Uh, so relax because we are in the house of God. Uh, we can be ourselves uh, because we are in His presence. And He knows everything. About us, you know. And let me tell you one or two stories just to get you feel, uh, get you to that feel, you know, of uh, 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 of time, fun time together. And of course, more than that, the word of the Lord. And also, I pray that God will speak something very deep into our hearts uh, this morning. Uh, there was a story about this elderly couple, you know, uh, they were in the house and a uh, robber uh, broke into their house and tied them up. And after tying them up, they, uh, you know, the robbers searched, raised the house and got everything that he wanted. And he came to that couple that was tied up and he said, Well, you have seen my face. I'm sorry to tell you that I have to kill both of you. You have seen my face, you recognize me. Now. And uh, he said to the wife, uh, Before I shoot you, can you tell me what is your name? At least I need to know what is your name. And she said, I'm Elizabeth. <laughs> and she was killed and her mother. So Elizabeth, I will not see you because you are Elizabeth. And he turned to the husband. Now what's your name? And he said, I'm Henry, but everybody calls me Elizabeth. <laughs> I 
are very, very important. And I would like to read his message to all of you today. And he opened a piece of paper and he read, You are stepping on my oxygen tube. <laughs> Come 
calculative at work. Um, he doesn't start sharp at nine and disappear at a strike of five. But he's a man who's responsible for the thing he does and who's conscientious of his work and he doesn't mind doing someone else's work as well. An excellent spirit. That's what Daniel had. Uh, uh, of course, uh, more than just being integrity and being honest, you know, but Daniel, because of his excellent spirit, the king had thought of putting him or promoting him in his already very high position to promote him again because he had an excellent spirit. You know, I have three kids. And when they were young, when they were young, uh, you know, we trained them to wash dishes, you know, after every meal. Yeah. So everybody takes turn to wash dishes. And you sometimes kids be kids, you know, and uh, one of them will complain. They say, not fair. <coughs> when it's my turn to wash, mom cooks more. <laughs> <laughs> but then they will complain when they eat more, you know. <laughs> And if one have a certain program in the night, you know, and uh, someone else have to take their place, you know, and say, okay, I, I, you know, I can't wash today, can you, can you wash for me? And, uh, you know, the next day they will always ask back, yesterday I did for you, today you do for me. You know, that's really natural for us to do that. And sometimes that kind of attitude creeps into our church as well, especially when, uh, uh, when you have some musicians. You know, some musicians will say, Ah, uh, I'm on my duty the whole month. What happened to the other Indians? Eh? Well, if she's on holiday, well, if she's on holiday, I will go on a holiday next month. Where are you going? Nowhere. <laughs> Can you imagine sometimes we get into that attitude that even serving God, we think it as a duty. And how I wish it would be, wow, what a privilege to play. What a privilege to sing. What a privilege to serve. And I always tell my people, can you picture with me, there are a few of us pastors in a pastoral room. I preached last week, it's your turn next week. No, I've been preaching for the last few weeks, past time. No. So, now, I visited the person yesterday, you're going to visit him tomorrow. Can you imagine we are all fighting one another? How many of you think that the church is in trouble? We are, we are all fighting how not to get how to get out of responsibility. But Daniel had an excellent spirit. And then all the other governors and satraps and officials were jealous. Don't you love to make people jealous? Especially the people of the world. They're jealous not because you carry the boss leg. Do you, you, do you use that term? You know what I mean by carry the boss leg? You butter him, you know? You make him feel so good that he promotes you, you know? And you, uh, you gossip about others, you know? So that you can step on them to climb the ladder promotion, you know? That's not what he does, but because he had a fear of God and because he had an excellent spirit, you see, other people do not like him if you don't do the things that they do. If they are crooks, they want you to be crooks. Hey, we all leave at 5. You don't leave at 5.05 because it makes us look bad. And so that's what is it during Daniel's time. He makes the others look bad because he's pure, he doesn't, he doesn't corrupt, he doesn't take extra when it's not due to him. He makes the others look bad. And so they want to fix him up. Let me tell you this, history always repeats itself. The devil has been around for so long and he plays his game all the time. The only thing that it comes in different packaging. You understand what I'm saying? 
know, some people say the devil is very uh, prominent. There are a lot of demons in Africa. There are a lot of demons in Asia, they say. In Europe, there are hardly any demons. Oh. <laughs> They don't need passport to go from country to country. <laughs> they don't, don't go to immigration. I tell you, you'll be surprised. They're probably more here than back at home. We cast them up over there. There are lots here. Just that they are under a different package, you know. They wear different clothes, you know. And they set up certain laws, you know. You get what I mean? And try to make some. That thing is legal, you get what I mean? So, demons are everywhere. Uh, everywhere. Uh, okay. Why did I go there? See? So, they tried to fix up Daniel and they did. And so, what did they do? They go to the king and they say to King Darius, you know, uh, they butter him, you know. And they say, King! We want you to make a decree that for the next 30 days, nobody should pray or petition from anyone else, not except from you, O King, because you are so good, you are such a nice man, you are such a powerful guy. Make this a law that nobody is going to pray to anyone else but to you. And you know something, when people cannot find any fault with you, they find fault with your goodness. They find fault with your faith. And in this case, they knew that Daniel was a man of God, was a God-fearing person. And so they tried to enact a law. That's it sound familiar. They tried to legislate a law to fix him up. See, I told you, the devil always repeats himself. And so the king feels nice. Hey, the next 30 days, people are going to worship me. I like it. Who doesn't? I like it. And so, he signed the decree. Whoever prays to anyone else but me, will be thrown into the lion's den. And when the enactment is signed, nobody can change it. Not even the king himself. And so the Bible says, Daniel, for some reason, Daniel was not consulted. He was one of Darius top three governor. And so what did Daniel do when he heard it? Let's look at the stand. When Daniel knew that the written writing was signed, he went home and in his upper room with his windows open towards Jerusalem, he knelt down on his knees three times that day and prayed and gave thanks before his God as was his custom since early days. The first thought I want to share with you and I talk about, let's get personal, is that Daniel has developed a personal prayer life. The first thing he did when he heard about the writings, when he heard about the law that has been passed, that has been enacted, the Bible tells us that he went home and in his upper room, he went towards the window, he opened towards Jerusalem, knelt down on his knees three times that day, and pray and give thanks to God because it was his custom since early days. This was 
is like a mouthful, it's filled with thoughts for us to think about it for a moment. The moment he heard this, he went home, he walked up to his window without a second thought that he is putting his own life, his own future, and his career in danger. He opened the window towards Jerusalem. And some people say, oh, see, look at Daniel. He was a religious man. He had to pray towards Jerusalem. You know, from where we come from, we can understand it fully because a, a Muslim would pray towards Mecca. You know, if you come to a country, if you ever check into a hotel and you look up the ceiling, you will see a word called Qibla with an with a arrow. So if you are Muslim, if you want to pray, you have to pray at the direction of that arrow, even though it may be pointing to the toilet of the hotel. <laughs> It's not about knowing about Him, it is 
knowing him. He prayed three times that day because it has been built inside him. That was his hiding place. That was his place of peace. That was non-negotiable because he would come to God. See, all of us need a time and a place where we can open our heart to him and talk to him and let him talk to us. We need that time with God. Some of you who struggle say, how, how does that happen? That we lead to another sermon. Because it's the journey that we take with God. It's a journey where God tells us about us. And we begin to be more and more like Him. So my challenge always, that in this busy world, I don't know how busy Danish are, but in Malaysia, people are busy. Busy, 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 busy. Why? Because the traffic is no good. Some people get stuck in traffic for hours. Busy. They have to rush to work. They quite rush hour. We don't know why, because nothing moves during the rush hour. <laughs> you can be stuck in traffic for an hour and <laughs> everybody's rushing, but nothing's moving. Some people from, from you know, our nation, from Kuala Lumpur, the capital city, some people have to brush in their car, they have to pace in their car, they have to change their clothes. Busy, 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 who have just got no time for that half an hour to get into the presence of God, to get strength from Him, to, to get grace from Him, to hear His voice, and to know Him. The secret of Daniel's life is that he has developed a personal time with God. All of us need that. Church is good, but church does not sustain our spiritual life. Because one day, we may get to a place where there isn't a church. But it is your work of God that keeps you going. It is hearing Him and knowing Him that keeps our faith alive. There's also another thing about this verse. I have not tell you some of the most important things in this verse. I think, as I read this verse again, the most important part is this. Let me read to you again. Okay? Verse 10, eh? Are we at verse 10? Right. It says, When Daniel knew that the writing was signed, he went home. I like that. When Daniel knew the writing was signed, he went home. I tell you what, if I'm Daniel, I wouldn't go home. When I hear that the writing was signed, that my life is at stake, I will be panicking. I will be running everywhere looking for help instead of going home. I will run to the pastor's home and say, Pastor, what are you doing? I will go to the council if I can and I say, Counselor, what are you doing? I will go to the king.
his place in God's presence. To him, it is the safest, it is the best, it brings him the peace that he needed. Some of us need to go home when we are in trouble. Go home, get on your knees. Where it was his custom, since he was a young boy, and open that window and talk to your Almighty God. Amen. Don't panic. I will, and I can do that. Sometimes we run about looking. that we take together. It's soul food from the heart. In God, we're united in our differences. It's a place of getting in touch with God, others, and your destiny. Come and visit ICC, the International Christian Community, a church where great things come together. Oh,